Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a very chit chatty, <laughs> get ready with me, using the TARDIS Pro to Go palette and lots of other things that I have pulled from my stash to use for the month. And yeah, I just wanted to have a heart to heart with you about a lot of things that are going on in my life and just kind of share part of my life with you. So if you'd like to hang out with me and watch me get ready and participate in a conversation with me about some things that really matter to me, then please keep watching. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a chit chat, get ready with me, and it's kind of in combination with my January stash shopping. I went through all my stuff last night and filmed that video, and this month I endeavored to do a better job of actually using the things that I pulled out of my stash and not just continually using my favorites. All right guys, so happy new year. Um, yeah. It's a new year, 2018, and I don't know why, but for me, it always seems like closing one chapter and opening another is just kind of a cleansing, therapeutic thing for me. It's like, you know, things are difficult. <laughs> Life is difficult. It gets increasingly difficult, I think, the older you are. When I was younger, I thought, I just want to get older. I just want to get older to where I have everything together, um, not knowing that I would probably never get it all together. Um, it's funny, I remember thinking about my parents when I was younger and thinking that they had all the answers and they were probably just as confused as I am was at their age. Um, it just seemed like they knew everything. <laughs> but anyway, so I have a lot of things to talk about. I just want to chat with you. And so I'm going to do that while I get ready. Um, one thing that I pulled out of my stash was this milk blur stick. I have no idea. I know I used it several times, but I guess I didn't pay attention to what happened through the day. And so I'm going to use that today. I already have all my, um, moisturizers and all those things are already on and have been for a while and had time to sink in. So I'm going to apply this to my face and let's see what this thing can do. I remember wanting this so badly and I paid a lot for it. I don't recall how much exactly, but it was a lot. And then I think the next month I got it in a subscription service. So I was like, man, I wish I had known. And obviously, I don't think I must have been extremely wowed by this or I wouldn't have put it away for so long. But on the other side of that, I do have a lot of products that um, I'm just going to kind of press this in. I do have a lot of products that I really love that I've put away and just kind of forgotten about. But anyway, New Year's. The time that everybody decides what they're going to do differently in the new year, right? Um, I don't know. I've kind of always been that person who doesn't necessarily set New Year's resolutions. I have at times. Have I followed through with them? Usually not. And as I got older, I just kind of decided not to set myself up for failure, I guess. Um, and when I decide to do something, like, I don't say, okay, well, I'll wait till the beginning of 2018. <laughs> Once I decide to do something, I just do it. Um, so I've mentioned a little bit from time to time that I'm kind of on a um, health journey. I've talked a lot about chronic illness and fibromyalgia and the things that I deal with on a daily basis. And, um, the more research I did, the more I realized that I really think that, you know, all the things, fibro, weight issues, all those things, even blood sugar issues, even though I'm not diabetic, um, all those things are symptoms of a bigger problem. And I didn't really realize what that problem was. Um, and that, let me give you just a little bit of a backstory. And while I do that, I'm going to grab my cup of freshly cleaned brushes. Doesn't that feel so good? I actually washed all my paddle brushes too, but they're still drying. They take a long time to dry. So I'll just use this flat top kabuki to put my initial layer of foundation on. Um, I did a 
I did get a new shade of this Maybelline uh, 24-hour foundation. I know it has a different name, or I thought it did. Anyway, Super Stay, full coverage. Yeah, Super Stay. <laughs> so anyway, I had one, and the color looked great when I put it on, and then it oxidized. And so I was like, this is way too light. And this will be the first time I'm using this on its own, not mixed with something else. Um because I just kind of want to test it out and see what it does. This is super full coverage, and I like that, but it's not extremely heavy. Um, but just a little bit of a backstory. Um, I had weight loss surgery, gastric bypass, RUNY, in 2005. Um, I lost about 164 pounds. I, through the year and a half after my surgery, I had almost an intolerance to almost all meats. Um, I threw up <laughs> every day, sometimes multiple times a day, uh, for the first year and a half after surgery. Um, that wasn't an unusual thing. I forgot to put on primer spray, primer spray, but oh well. Let's go with it. This will give me a really good idea of the, the blur stick without other things that maybe will enhance its performance. But anyway, it was one of those things where I was just fighting to get enough nourishment into my body. And I was having so much trouble with proteins, with eggs, with um, meat and chicken in particular. Um, because, of course, the diet afterwards was supposed to be low fat, high protein. Um, you know, carbs weren't really mentioned much. They were just... I guess part of it and we were supposed to concentrate on getting in like 70 to 90 grams of protein and whenever dense <laughs> food is something that your new little tummy can't tolerate getting that kind of uh, amount of protein in was felt daunting and impossible um, and trying to get that in was just impossible, especially when every time I would get some meat down, and sorry, this is kind of gross, but every time I would get some meat down, it was coming back up. And what would happen to me, and I don't know how much you guys know about weight loss surgery, but whenever they create the new pouch, they dissect the stomach, create a new pouch, a smaller stomach capacity, but they also narrow the area between your esophagus and the outlet to your stomach. It, it makes it very rigid where you have to take small bites, chew forever because um, otherwise it's gonna get stuck. And meat, particularly chicken, dry chicken breast got stuck all the time. So I just felt like I was in a, a battle that I couldn't win. Um, I finally found some soy-based products that I could get in and keep in. Um, eggs didn't work for me for the first year. I've, I can eat them now. There's a lot of things that I can have now that I couldn't at the beginning. But all of that to say, I really, um, developed an aversion to meat. Naturally, if you're eating something that makes you throw up every time you eat it, the aversion develops quickly and it's understandable. Well, in that process, I really was carb heavy because and I'm talking about crackers, pretzels, popcorn, those kind of things, because I could eat those without being sick. Um, but what I didn't really realize is that I was really putting myself into a cycle of only eating something that was really unhealthy for me. I look like an absolute ghost right now. <laughs> and that's okay, because I promise you guys, this stuff oxidizes. I'm just going to put a tiny bit more on the blender. And... Um, just increase the coverage in my T-zone area with the blender and then I'll just go all over it. I can already see it changing. It looks so wide in the viewfinder, but in my actual mirror, it doesn't look so white and it will darken, I promise you. But anyway, so I was basically on a, I would probably say 25% protein, 75% carb. Um, 
I learned that I could eat pasta. I learned that I could eat crackers, pretzels, popcorn, all those things. Those became the staples of my diet because that's what my little pouch would tolerate. Um, I started having blood sugar issues, not high blood sugar, but very low. And in essence, over time, now I understand that what was happening is I was eating carbs, it was turning to sugar, I was getting blood insulin hikes. Um, because the insulin was released, the food had already digested through my system because with that surgery, it literally goes from pouch into intestines in a very short amount of time. The insulin was there to uh, process through food that had already been slightly digested and was already heading elsewhere. Um, and I would end up having a bottoming out of my blood sugar. But anyway, so, um, you know, I tried various, various things for weight loss. Um, Nutrisystem, you know, eating 800 calories a day, you know, all these extreme things. I um, couldn't understand how in the world I was eating like a bird and I was still gaining weight. Like, it was a panic situation because when you go to the extent of rearranging your insides for the sake of trying to lose weight and be healthy, it is very scary and discouraging because that's a last resort. At least for me, that was a last resort. Um, and that was a year of searching for a surgeon, doing research, asking people who had had the surgery, finding out which one was going to be the right one for me, going through the crazy process of insurance um, approval, uh, coverage, and all those kind of things. It was you know, a crazy process that I would not recommend to most just because I really feel like we were guinea pigs. Um, and I actually had friends who passed away from complications from the surgery, uh, mostly because I think doctors really jumped on the um, weight loss surgery or bariatric surgery bandwagon because there was so much money to be made. All these people who are desperate for a way to lose weight had, you know, were begging for this and, you know, tons of money to be made. And so, anyways, it was difficult and it was very frustrating to not be able to eat and not be able to eat normal things without being sick. And after the weight loss stopped and started going back up, I was in a panic. So, of course, I tried all the traditional things, you know, Weight Watchers and, um, this is tart shape tape. I hope I didn't grab light. I did. You know, I need to take this out of my drawer. I'm going to wipe this off, you guys, because, or at least some of it, because I thought I would kind of balance out the really, what looks really light on the foundation with the um, concealer. So let's try this again. Um, so I, you know, to be really honest, I just gave up. I was just like, I have done radical things trying to get healthy trying to lose weight and I you know I had tasted some physical freedom and you know whenever you have struggled to walk and struggled to do stairs and struggled to clean yourself and struggled you know to do things for so long and you get a taste of physical freedom um, it's crazy how desperate you feel when you feel that physical freedom being taken away or losing it again. And that's what was happening. And I was scared and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I do now? And I finally just kind of gave up and that's really sad, but that's what I did. And in the meantime, you know, I would research, I would hear things that other people were doing that were working. There were times I would make some minor changes. Um, there were times my stomach would tolerate it. There were times it wouldn't, um, you know, diets that regular people use have to be modified in some way because of my rerouted innards. Um, man, that sounds hillbilly, but yeah. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of, you know, lost hope and I was like, okay, I'm going to be sick this way. I'm going to be like this forever. Um, but I continued from time to time to research. And I, you know, heard all these different things and, and I started researching intermittent fasting and keto lifestyle, all those kind of things. And I started learning about sugar and carbs and how 
damaging they are to our body. I've just learned so many things. Um, processed foods and why there's an epidemic of diabetes and high blood pressure and I'm using Laura Mercier um, secret brightening powder to set this. Uh, heart disease, cancer, all these things. And what it all came down to is it was because of the food industry and its attempt to um, grow things faster, keep things with a massive shelf life, all these different reasons. And I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm going to use the Peach Perfect uh, setting powder for the rest of my face. But, you know, we've been duped in a lot of ways to believe that a low fat, um, you know, moderate carb, whatever version of a diet, but the standard American diet is not healthy for us. Um, and all the things that I thought would work to lose weight were never long term, were never something that I could maintain um, for the long term. You know, to be frank, some of that was very damaging to my body. To make a long story short, I wrecked my metabolism completely, um, partially from the weight loss surgery. Because when you go to cutting all your calories, and who knows how many calories I was eating before um, I had the weight loss surgery. I couldn't even give you a guess because I had given up and I wasn't watching what I was doing. I was just, you know, eating whatever. And so in October, I really felt like a lot of the questions that I had had all these years were answered. And what I found was that I was basically doing the polar opposite of what I needed to be doing for my body. And that was discouraging, but also exciting because it's like, okay, I think I have learned things that actually make sense that explain why my body's doing what it's doing. And so, and I think I have the answer on how to fix my metabolism. Um, and that is through, you know, cutting out sugar entirely, limiting carbs very, very radically, um, having moderate protein, lots of vegetables. And the good thing about that is I can tolerate the protein now. I love fruits and vegetables. Um, I also cut out fruit entirely. Um, big changes, but effective changes. And I can't tell you how exciting it is to be able to eat in a way that is sustainable for me. I can maintain it long term. I'm seeing results. Um, as of yesterday, I think I've lost 25 pounds and about 20 inches. Um, it's blowing my mind because it's not difficult. Are there times that I want all those things? Of course. Are there times like at Thanksgiving and Christmas that I indulged in those things? Yes. Um, under major control though and feeling very happy that I could even have control over myself in those situations. Um, but you know, there's all those cliche things about it has to be a lifestyle change, blah, 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 blah. Right? Yes, it has to be a lifestyle change. Um, but not one for a year or two years. It has to be something that you can maintain. And if you can't do it for a month, then how in the world do you think you're going to do it for the rest of your life? So it feels really good to know that I'm doing something that I can maintain person per permanently. And it also feels good to know that what I'm doing is effective. I feel better. My mind is clear. I have energy for days. Um, my hunger is completely under control. I, you know, I can do this. <laughs> I can totally do this. And I'm not worried about when it's going to happen. Yeah, there are times it's too slow. But too slow in my realm of thinking about how fast it should be. Too slow is the healthy way. You know, a half a pound to two pounds a week is excellent. Occasionally, there'll be those times when you get a big drop, um, times that, you know, water and hormones, women's bodies are crazy. There's so many variables. Um, but just knowing that in a year from now, I'm probably going to be down 50 or more pounds and I can feel the physical freedom returning. Things aren't so hard. It's not so difficult with stairs. When I step downstairs, I don't have to, you know, brace myself for the pressure that I'm going to feel. Um, you know, I feel like... I, 
that I'm healing my metabolism. I feel like as I heal my metabolism, I feel like the rest of the things in my body are healing. I have less inflammation. I haven't had as many flares. Um, I can sense what my body needs. Like if I need electrolytes, if I need potassium, sodium, magnesium, if I need those things, I feel it in my body. If I need water, I feel it. And it's the first time in my life that I feel like I've been like in partnership with my body instead of enemies of one another. Like my mind sabotaging my body all the time. I feel like they're working together for the first time and that is really exciting. Um, grabbing my cheek palette. So, um, yeah. The diabetic thing, um, I actually left a part of my me rushing off to help my husband with the seizure in one of my videos um, because I really, I guess I just want people to understand how diabetes is just, or diabetes, I never know how to say it. I'm using Hula Light, by the way. I'm going to use that as a bronzer and then I'll use the the regular hula to kind of contour a little bit. But um, my husband has been type 1 diabetic and since he was about 8 years old. And, you know, it's just such a terrible disease. It just, you know, it destroys your body. When I met my husband, he was in a wheelchair. Um, and from physical therapy and stuff that he did after we got married, he did get back to walking again. Um, and it was so exciting, you know, again, for him to have the physical freedom that most people take for granted. But anyway, um, not long after, he had probably been walking again for about, I don't know, six months at the maximum, maybe three or four. Um, but in the night, I woke up and I heard him and I went into the living room and um, his leg was literally pointing the wrong direction. He had had a seizure, fallen off of his chair, out of off the couch. I don't really know what happened exactly because I was sleeping in the other room. And um, his leg was broken in three places. So there he goes again. So bless his heart, he has done everything that he could do to get back on his feet, to be healthy, and um, man, it's been a diff difficult, you know, life for him health-wise. Um, but he has seizures, often. He has seizures from low blood sugar, and it happens when he's sleeping. Um, he goes to sleep, and he can't feel the hypoglycemic symptoms, which are, you know, clamminess and dizziness and you just kind of go into it's like an out of body experience and I know this because it's happened to me um I don't know if the light is too bright I think when I make the light too bright my tan walls kind of reflect off and I look yellow I'm gonna tap it down just a smidge um but anyway, it happens a lot, and it's been happening too much lately. Over my break, it's made me very uncomfortable. I'm going to go into Rockateur also. I was using Dandelion, if I didn't say, just to give a little pop of glow. I am going to use a highlighter, but anyway, um, over my break, it happens so much, at least once a day, that I was just getting really worried, like, I'm at work for eight hours a day. You know, how many times is this happening when I'm not here? How many times is this happening and he doesn't know it? Because he literally leaves his senses. It's almost like you're dealing with a drunk two-year-old. <laughs> and that sounds crazy, but drunk in the way that nothing's making sense. The things that they're saying aren't making any sense. It's like jibber-jabber over things. For example, and this makes me laugh, we both laughed af after it. But one time he looked at me and he goes, you're Asian. And I said, oh, is that right? And he goes, yeah, nice sweater. <laughs> you know, just random things that, you know, a brain that's not functioning, functioning properly from lack of blood sugar um, says. And so anyways, he does have an appointment with this specialist um, to see if the settings on his insulin pump are set in a way that they're making his sugar bottom out. 
but man, you know, it's those things that when you love somebody who suffers from things like that, it's very discouraging to see that happen. And it's also scary considering I have to be away from here to earn a living. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you just pray to God that nothing happens to him when I'm not here. Um, but hopefully the new settings will make things better and it should because all this kind of happened after sh the diabetic specialist changed his settings. So I think obviously there's something off kilter there. Um, yesterday when I was doing my stash shopping and I hope it's in here. Yeah, I was describing these as eyeshadows because I really thought that's what they were, but I even read out loud, um, highlight duo. So, these were highlighters before I even knew what highlighters were. And this is by Tarina Tarantino, which I really don't know who she is, but the packaging is beautiful. And that's what drew me in. But, I'm going to use this color for a highlighter and see how it is. Maybe it's wonderful and it's been sitting there not being used for two years. Um, but anyway, so, if, if you have any blood sugar issues, please don't ignore them because, you know, he has to do dialysis now. He's in kidney failure. He has heart issues. Like, diabetes is, a, it, it is just a terrible destroyer of your body. Um, I'm going to go into both of these. That looks really light. I'll blend it in a little better later. But um, it just, you know, it's so devastating to the body. And the truth is, like from my research, what I believe to be the truth is that the reason that there's a epidemic of diabetes, of diabetes is because we are all addicted to sugar. And it's in everything, things that you would never even believe. For instance, when I was doing my sugar research, I learned that one craft single has 19 grams of sugar. Now, if you're going to pick something that you think has 19 grams of sugar, you're going to think a gummy bear, a piece of chocolate, not a piece of cheese. So, but that's the point I'm making. All these things that you think, that, I mean, you just eat them blindly, not knowing that you are ingesting massive amounts of sugar all the time in things that you don't even realize. It's in everything, you know, it's in lunch meat. It's in almost anything processed. And almost anything low fat because when you take out the fat there has to be something else that's going to make it palatable and that seems to be sugar um we were having a a little christmas party in my classroom recently and somebody sent some i call them short dogs those little bitty sodas um little half size sodas and it was root beer and I looked on the nutritional um, information it had 33 grams of sugar and I'm sitting there thinking this is literally poison and I wonder why my kids are bouncing off the walls all the time think about donuts or pop tarts or frosted flakes with milk and all the think about the sugar content of that and what that's doing to the kids body and I literally have learned that sugar and carbs literally do to your body what alcohol does without the buzz. Like it can destroy your liver. It can mess up all kinds of systems in your body on a cellular level. So, you know, I just have a way different perspective on, on sugar and in my mind it's poison. Um, do I still crave it sometimes? Not nearly as much as I used to, but yes, sometimes. Um, but I really feel like I have a good grip on it and, you know, I pray for anybody who has to deal with diabetes. You know, my whole weight loss journey thing began from the beginning of all this is that diabetes was so prevalent in my family. I was so afraid I was going to end up with it. And that was part of the reason why I chose the weight loss surgery because they actually had deemed it as a cure for type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, I think. Type 2. Um, not type 1. Type 1 um, is not going to be corrected without just being insulin dependent for the most part. Um, but anyways, you know, I was like, I don't want to end up like this. I don't want to end up having to check my blood sugar eight times a day. I don't want all this medicine. Um, what kind of woke me up to that is I had gone somewhere and picked up um, a sack of medications for my one of my aunts. And I was looking in there, it was like 20 bottles in there. And I thought to myself, Sherry, this is your future if you don't do something about your weight. When are you going to do something about your weight? 
you know, and it wasn't for lack of trying, but, um, man, you know, I really feel, I forgot to put highlighter right here. I really feel like we're bamboozled in so many ways, and I feel like I've been lied to. Um, and it's crazy because what, what's been the craziest thing for me is reprogramming my thinking. I mean, every time I eat something that has a healthy amount of fat in it, even an avocado, even any something that's really um, healthy for you, I like I cringe and think, oh my gosh, this is like so many grams of fat in my whole life. So what I tried to do was to not any, eat anything with fat, and I'm doing the opposite of that. And that's crazy. Um, really hard to, to reprogram yourself and turn yourself in a whole different direction. And, and let me just say, every individual person's body is so complex, and the way it works is so complex, particularly women with hormonal things. Um, what works for me may not work for you. Um, I think it's all about you have to do the research and the experimentation with your own body and figure out what works for you. Um, sometimes what works for everybody else doesn't work for you. Uh, and that's where all my frustration came from. In so many ways, I was like, gosh, why in the world is, you know, because I would jump on whatever bandwagon anybody was on. If any, if I saw anybody losing weight, I jumped on the bandwagon. Um, and so, you know, I was so frustrated over it all. But the point I'm making is just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And you have to figure it out yourself based on your body, you know, your lifestyle, your activity level, all those things. And for now, I just, for the first time in my life, in the last 30 years of my life, I feel hopeful and expectant and know that good things are happening because I feel good. And if you listen to your body, it will tell you what it needs. But when it's clouded by sugar and carbs and all the reactions, insulin resistance and all those things that are happening, you can't listen to your body because it's all in an uproar because it doesn't know what you're doing to it. And really, do I have to give a disclaimer? I guess I do. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just speaking out of my own experience and what I've learned and what, hap what is, happens to be working for me. And that is cutting out sugar, very low carb. The carbs I do eat are naturally occurring whole foods like vegetables, um, no fruit, Lots of uh, coffee with grass-fed butter and coconut oil in it, avocados, you know, lots of green cruciferous vegetables, um, and luckily I really like those, so that makes it easy for me. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about it, and I haven't really talked about it. I, You know, I said I would talk about it when someone asked me. Nobody has really asked me. I just, it was just the perfect time to talk about it because it seems like that's when everybody makes resolutions. So it just seemed like a good time to talk about it. Um, I'm going to use the NYX micro brow to do my eyebrows. But yeah, um, New Year's resolutions. I don't have New Year's resolutions in regard to my weight because I've been working on this since October. Um, my whole life in essence, but hardcore um, making big changes since October. Really happy about that, as I've probably over explained. Right, Matthew? I was discussing with him the other day how I think it's my teacher nature to over explain everything because when you're teaching little kids, you explain and then you explain in a different way. And then if that doesn't make sense to them, you, you know, switch gears and explain in another way until everybody's light bulb goes on. Um, so I'm sorry if I do that, but it's just my teacher nature coming out. But anyways, my New Year's resolutions really have to do with continuing what I'm doing. Um, really have a lot to do with my channel and my disciplines, I guess. Um, my church is Life Church, and um, if you're ever interested, they have a very awesome online presence with Church Online. Um, but my pastor's name is Craig Rochelle, and for the last few years, they've talked about, um, 
I think the entire staff does some sort of fast for the first 21 days of the year just as a way to add a discipline. Um, but my pastor is always talking about um, every year adding one discipline. And he was using flossing as an example. He said that if he begins his day with flossing, that small little discipline, that he's disciplined in everything else throughout his day. For instance, he goes in and works out that day. He eats a healthy lunch. He does, you know, doesn't procrastinate things and it's like that like begins a chain reaction of um, you know good habits and the discipline that I added to myself this year um, is really getting good sleep um, sleep has so much to do with reversing the effects that high stress has on your body um, teaching is a very high stress situation. Um, when you're trying to do 800 things at once and you've got 20 people who all want something from you at the same time, it can be very overwhelming and it's very stressful. And it's one of those things that is stressful for eight solid hours. Um, there's very rarely a downtime or a time that you're not just on the run. And in the meantime, you know, you're trying to plan for the next week. You're um, doing the, all the things that the state requires. And, you know, you're, professional, you're doing professional development. Um, teachers are lifelong learners. Almost, I would imagine, 100% of us are. Um, we're always looking for the next thing. What's, what's the next thing that's going to help us help our kids the most? Um, you know, if we have a particular class that struggles with a certain thing, well, we're going to go research. We're going to go to Pinterest. We're going to go on Google and and look on blogs and find out, you know, different methods and ways to try to help our kids succeed in those areas that they're struggling in. And so um, sleep is just, you know, I get up at the crack of dawn the way it is. I get up at 430 uh, sometimes five, depending on how many times I allow myself to push the snooze button. But, um, you know, I've always been a night owl. I love to stay up late. During my breaks, I have to really keep myself from staying up till three or four in the morning every, every night because I just, I'm just a night owl. So the fact that I am makes the fact that I chose a very early morning profession, um, not a very smart thing as far as my chemistry and the way that my body enjoys, um, nighttime hours more than morning hours definitely not a morning person um and with my body and my issues from fibro you know I have major pain when I wake up in the morning it's a while before I can move the way I'd like to um you know get dressed and shower and all those things so um I used to stay up you know till 11 or 12 <laughs> anyway and it was craziness and it's amazing to me how hard it's been to get myself in bed. And sometimes I'm sitting there doing something meaningless that's not even like a work thing or um, even a channel thing. I'm just kind of sitting there staring at the wall or staring at the TV or whatever. And I'm just like, take yourself to bed, dummy. Why are you doing this? And so my job... What I used to do is say, okay, 10 o'clock bedtime. But I would start getting ready for bed at 10 o'clock. And starting even before the new year started, I was like, I am going to start going to bed, meaning go take care of everything I have to take care of before I actually get in bed um, at 9 o'clock. That way I get in bed by 9.30. And what I mean by get things ready, like I make sure that I have clothes set out for the next day. Um, I make sure that my lunch is made, um, you know put some dishes in the dishwasher, you know, just, or empty the dishwasher, whatever it is I need to do. Hang up some clothes, because I always find 14 things once I start looking around. Um, but then I usually get in bed by about um, 9.30, and then that gives my body a chance to unwind, and I usually will go to sleep by about 10 o'clock. And that is my sweet spot, because that really gives me... Um, 
a good six to seven hours of sleep, and that doesn't sound like much, and but that's much for somebody who would average four. Um, you know, go to bed at midnight, get go to sleep by 12.30, get up at 4.30, you know, and that was like, I was tired before half my day was over, and of course I was still eating lots of carbs, and I was dealing with major fatigue and major after eating fatigue, and I'm so thankful that that's all gone. And I can make it through my work day very, very easily. I do not get tired. I don't run out of energy. Um, it's much different since I changed my eating habits. But that's my discipline for the year. Um, with our church, and I think a lot of churches, and maybe not even church necessarily, a lot of people choose a word uh, for the year. Like, this is what I'm going to work on, you know. Um, last year... I don't even remember what my word was, but it was like, for me, it was like a year of new beginnings. It was like stopping the procrastination. It was stop talking about all the things that you're going to do, including my YouTube channel, and actually do it. Um, I did a lot of things that I gave up a lot of things. Sometimes you have to give up things to make room. Um, my pastor says sometimes you have to give up things that you love for things that you love more. Um, I love my family more. I love my life more. I love, you know, my grandbabies more than I do eating chocolate. I want to be around when my granddaughter gets married. You know, I want to be around whenever important things happen in my family. I don't want to be a burden to the people that love me because my health ends up being so bad that, you know, I, I have to have assistance. Like, I... You know, so that was last year. It's like, okay, figure out how to deal with the issues that are going on in your body first. Start something that is your passion, <laughs> which is makeup. Um, it has been for a long time. I really kind of started off that way because high school, I went to cosmetology school. Um, I really kind of gave it up because... My body just could not stand up for eight hours a day, if I'm being honest. Too much weight. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't, even as a nail tech, um, it was so difficult for me physically. And I just, I, and I couldn't wait for, I couldn't get a clientele developed and make a living at the same time. And at this time I was married to my first husband and... Um, trying to finish college and I just I couldn't go spend that much time doing something that wasn't bringing in any income um, but that's where it all started and I've always you know really loved makeup really loved beauty in general um, nails and all that but I just kind of gave it up because I didn't really feel like I could make a living doing it um, and so the YouTube thing is such a joy to me and such, I have such a passion for it and I'm so thankful for it because I, it's a blast to me. I love it. I love the editing process. Most people hate to edit. I love it. Um, it's very therapeutic to me to take something that's kind of all in pieces and make it into something that's, you know, cohesive and usually understandable. I'm not going to claim that it always is because I know myself <laughs> and you guys know what I mean. But um, yeah, passion. I have a passion for it. There is absolutely no doubt about it. I was using Brow Envy. You guys probably already knew that. But that brings me to something that I kind of touched on on the YouTuber beauty tag thing, but I want to go into it a little bit further. Um, I've been seeing so many videos lately about people talking about um, sponsorship and um, disclaimers and all those things, disclosure that something is sponsored. Guys, here's my thing. Having a YouTube channel is way time, time consuming. You're giving up time that you could be doing something else um, to do this because it's your passion. Now, What's wrong with 
doing something that makes a living for you, what's better in the world than having a, a job that you love and that doesn't even feel like work because you love it and you have that kind of passion for it? Like what's better than that? And what's wrong with being able to make a living by doing that? You know, at this point, I'm not even monetized, but am I going to apply for monetization whenever I get my 10,000 views? Absolutely. Now at this point, there is no way in the world I would make a living doing YouTube, okay? But I'm not gonna say that's never gonna happen. It could. It happened for people who never thought it could happen. So I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna limit myself and say that that will never happen. If it did, I would be so happy, okay? But at this point, any, you know, magic links or things that I use to link things that I get one cent per click or something like that, it's always fully disclosed in my info box. I don't usually talk about it because it's not, you know, I really don't get anything. I'm establishing those things for later. Whenever I do get a ton of views and I do have the opportunity um, to have a lot of traffic through my channel, I'm establishing those things now because someday it might be fruitful. Um, one day it might pay my living. Who knows? But I don't, I'm not going to hate on anybody who does a sponsored video. And I'm not going to hate on anybody who um, finds ways to make money from doing YouTube. You're investing massive amounts of time. So if anybody's making you feel bad about trying to find ways to make a living on YouTube, stop. This is your time. You're giving this time willingly, freely. And, and as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of like paying your dues. We're paying our dues right now, okay? Yeah, we're paying our dues. Um, will that be fruitful later? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I really believe that it's consistency. It's like, am I going to hang out and continue to do this even when I have a small amount of viewers, even when I don't have any potential for making any money, even when all the stuff that I'm using for my channel and the content comes out of my pocket? Am I still going to do that? even if I don't make any money. Yes, I will, because it's my passion. Will I continue to do it even if I don't ever make any money? Yes, I will, because it's my passion. I understand that people are tired of being duped. I understand that people are tired of fakes and people who are saying one thing because somebody's putting some money in their pocket for saying it. Um, that's where you develop a rapport with the people that you're that are viewing your channel. You develop a rapport. You're honest. You disclose when things are going on. Um, whenever you are offered a sponsorship or a collab, you make sure that people know that you're being paid for that or this is a sponsored video or whatever. Um, I don't have any problem. If I decide to do that, it will only be with a product that I believe in or with a brand that says, yes, honest review, say whatever you really feel about this. Um, you know, it's gonna be, I, I can't wait for those days. Here's the thing. I don't wanna make enough money to actually go full time. I still have a lot of teaching that I want to do. I don't want to not teach. Um, you know, I have to work till I'm 59 or something at least, and I'm 46 as far as retirement and all that stuff is concerned. But do I want to make enough money from my channel to be able to spend that money to buy the product that I'm using for the content on my channel? Yes. That is my goal for this year. All the things that I'm setting up that aren't fruitful now, I want to continue to just learn about these things, implement these things on my channel so that when and if my channel does grow significantly, it can be a way to support and give back money that I can invest back into my channel. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think people have been so dishonest that it makes sponsored videos seem like you're trying to get over on somebody. Um, you have to have that rapport with your, your viewers. You have to have relationships with people so that they trust you. If Emily Noel did a sponsored video right now, without a doubt, I would trust that what she was saying was true. Some others, Stephanie Nicole, Raw Beauty Christy, I've been watching her a lot. I, they have developed a rapport with their viewers and their viewers know that it's no BS. 
So you have to take the time to hang around long enough to discuss these things with your viewers long enough and answer whatever questions somebody might have so that they trust your judgment and they understand that if you're bringing them a sponsored video, it's because it's something that they want to share with you. It's a product that they believe in. It's a brand that they believe in or it's a brand that said, okay, here's the product, try it. If you hate it, you can say so. And if you don't hate it, you can say so. Um, and if they never send you PR again, okay. Why do you want to work with a company that's going to stop sending you PR if you give them a negative review? If you want an honest channel. And I'm always going to want an honest channel. So that's how I feel about sponsorship. Hopefully I made that clear. Um, I have like major disgusting foundation lips now. Yuck. Let me take care of that. You know, I knew I was going to go on rants today. I knew it. And that's the reason I even wrote down some stuff that I was going to talk about because um, it's been on my mind. When something's on my mind and on my heart, I want to talk to you guys about it because I want to establish those things now. You know, what happens if I get a viral video and all of a sudden I have 500,000 subscribers? Um, do I turn into some plastic cookie cutter, you know, spokesman for whatever company is paying my bills that moment? Not me. Somebody else might do that, but not me. Uh, you know, I'm establishing that now, but I'm not going to pass up opportunities that will be fruitful for me and my channel that will be beneficial to the people who watch my channel just because I'm so afraid somebody's going to call me a sellout. If I have presented myself to you in a way that shows you that I'm trustworthy, that shouldn't be an issue as long as I'm honest about what I'm doing. I would love to hear what you guys think about that. Because so many YouTubers feel so inclined to have to justify every move that they make because of people being dishonest that it's made it difficult for people. Um, would I ever consider a full-time job of YouTube? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's going to come a day when I'm not going to be able to teach anymore. Um, I, I know better than to think I'm just going to sit around and watch soap operas all day. That's not me. I want to continue learning and growing until the day I die. So if I could do YouTube full time, absolutely would do it. Yes. Who would disagree or who would decline doing something full time that they love and getting paid for it? Hello? Seriously, you guys. I don't see anything wrong with that. You guys, if you guys have a different perspective and think that sponsorships are crap and, and you have good reasons for believing that, I would love to hear your opinion on that because you guys the way that you feel and you know what degree of trustworthiness you think I have matters to me for all the reasons that I just told you and I've literally stopped putting makeup on my face my eyebrows look crazy <laughs> because I was talking the whole time I was doing them and not concentrating and I need some major plucking guys this part right here is getting so far down that I'm making this Groucho Marx, Grouch, oh, if I could talk it would be great, Groucho Marx eyebrows. Um, yeah. <laughs> it looks crazy. Now I just jacked up the line. But anyway, so you can see I'm passionate about that. Um, I just don't. I don't, I'm not going to invest my life and my heart and my time into something that I don't want to be successful. Um, you know, successful in the YouTube world is that brands want to work with you. Um, there's a lot of people who trust your opinion and your judgment and your assessment of things. You know, there's so many things that, that can happen that are exciting and I would love to be involved in. And I'm not going to say no whenever those opportunities present themselves. Will I pray about it and make sure that it's the right thing for me? Absolutely. Absolutely. It will not be done in a flippant way without a lot of thought and prayer and discussion with about it with people that I trust to give me good counsel. For sure. So you can always believe that you can always trust that with me that it won't ever be dishonest 
or in a way that doesn't show integrity. Never. I would give up my channel before I would do something like that. Straight up. I, I said in one of my videos that my biggest pet peeve in life is people who don't keep their word. I will like kill myself keeping my word, you guys. I'm going to go in with Painterly Paint Pot. I will never willingly go back on my word unless there are circumstances that I have no control over. And I think the reason I feel so strongly about that is because I've had so many people break their word to me, you know? I mean, considering the fact that I'm divorced, that, you know, gives a lot of clue into somebody who, you know, intended on being married forever and, you know, people make choices that impact your life that you have no control over. Um, but I take giving my word to somebody very seriously. And the way I always feel about those kind of situations is if you're not going to do it, don't say you're going to do it. It's that simple. And if you say you're going to do it and somehow things don't work out, be honest and just say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This was my intention. It didn't work out that way. And I'm sorry about that. I'm going to take my... Coastal Scents BRC N42 Big Old Fluffy Butt Brush and the um, Tarina Tarantino Crimp. I have no idea what I'm going to do on my eyes today, but it's going to be stuff from my stash. Because I, if we're talking about New Year's resolutions, there's one of them. I'm decreasing the size of my collection. Quit holding on to a bunch of stuff that I don't enjoy. Why? Why clutter up a bunch of drawers with things that I don't enjoy? It makes no sense. Alright guys, I was going to show you. I keep this picture. I cannot believe I'm showing the world this, but I'm going to. Um, because, yeah, I want you to understand. This is a picture of my mom, one of my best friends, Reba, my best cousin, Tisha, one of my best cousins. I have two that I'm really close to. More than that, actually. But anyway, I digress. This was a picture of me taken at my um, rehearsal dinner when I married Henry, my, my stepkid's dad. Um, I literally have no neck. My face is so distorted. Anyways, this is where I came from. This is what I looked like before the weight loss surgery. So, as you can see, I've come a long way. And whenever I feel like it's not moving fast enough, I go back to that picture. I keep it right here on my on my vanity mirror to look at and think, you know, girl, you've come a long way. Don't give up now. So I have a couple other pictures. I, I don't know where they are. I used to keep them in my school desk. I don't know what's happened to them, but I'll run across them. I, I kept the two most god-awful pictures of myself that I looked the fattest and the t most terrible in. Um, what's amazing to me is how distorted my face is. Like, you can't even see my features. You can't see my jawline. Um, yeah. So, I've come a long way. I also have big pants. Anybody who's been on any kind of weight loss journey knows what I'm talking about whenever I say big pants. I have pants that I wore when I was that size, and I'm not sure I didn't even get a little bit bigger than that. But, like, when I, every once in a while, when I feel like, I'm not moving fast enough. I put those on and I can let go of them and they'll drop to the ground. And I'm like, okay, you're not where you want to be, but you're so much better than you were. So I also found this little palette, this Tardis Pro to Go palette. Again, don't know where it came from. Don't, when, don't know when I got it, but I've never used it. It looks like I've had my fingers in it. I've swatched it. Um, this is the brush that I'm going to start with. Actually not, but this is the first Morphe one I'm going to start with. And these have no numbers, so sorry about that. And this doesn't even have a name of the palette. So, I mean the brush set. So, But look at this thing, you guys. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Perfect mattes. Perfect, like it's got the perfect mauve and plummy dark outer a outer V color. It's got a beautiful transition color and two very awesome 
matte or shimmers. So I'm excited and I'm going to try these. I'm going to start off with my ordinarily start off every look with this BH Cosmetics Blender. I'm going to go into the shade Drive right there. And it's kind of a light mauve. And I'm going to use that for my transition. I decided that I just, since I was going to be so chatty today, I decided I wasn't going to do some crazy look. I think in my mind, I kind of decided that whenever I am going to do a chatty video, I'm going to do a simple look. Because when I'm doing a really complex, multi-step, takes forever kind of look, I really have to concentrate. Or I jack it up. So I'm going to make this one pretty simple. But speaking of, back to the New Year's resolutions. I want to whittle down, and that's such a hillbilly sound, sounding term. I want to condense the size of my collection. I want my collection to consist, like if I go into my Alex drawers, or I go into all these little shelves I have on the side of my vanity, and if I ever clean it up enough, I might actually do a tour if you guys were interested in that. You can let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in seeing my vanity area. Um, but anyway, I want to go into any drawer, any shelf, and whatever I pick up is something I love. Not something I'm not sure about. Not something I, you know, think is just okay. Because I have enough makeup to have enough of all these things that I really love. So why would I continue to let things that I don't love take up space when my space is limited. If I had an entire beauty room where I could put 15 sets of Alex drawers, that would be different. But, and I really think about that too in terms of PR. It's like, what in the world do they do with all that? I mean, I know a lot of charities and like domestic violence type, air, you know, um, what's the word? Come on, neurons, fire. Shelters. Um, you know, where I'm using the shade Crisp right here. And it's it's going to go into my upper crease. It's a really warm color. Um, just to add some warmth. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of those places that make like kind of, you know, bags for people who kind of leave with nothing but the shirt on their back. Um... It has to be new makeup, I think. I'm pretty sure it has to be new products. But, um, gosh, what do they do with all that? Like, whenever I watch Tati or, you know, Nicole Guerrero, one of these bigger um, YouTubers, how in the world do they, what do they do with all the makeup that they get rid of? I mean, I know some of it they keep for, you know, explanation or comparison or whatever, but golly. Looking at the boxes and some how big, like look, think about the I Want Candy PR set. If any of you saw it, it was like this giant lollipop. And I know some of those things. This has a lovely, let me put it on the end of my nose, vanilla scent. But what do they do? I mean, you only have so many friends that you can give stuff away to. Like for me, it'd probably be easy because I could just take take it and put it in the teacher's lounge and just say, hey guys, have at it, you know? And they would be like, I love you. Um, and of course my family, my nieces, everybody is always happy when it's Sherry has decluttered time. But anyway, I wonder about those things. I guess you deal with it as, as, as your channel grows and those are things that you have to deal with. I'm going to blend that out with the first brush that still has some of that initial color on it. But anyway, speaking of all this stuff, I, I want to continue to declutter, put some stuff on the chopping block, test it out for the last time and get rid of it if, if it's not something I love. I also um, have enough new stuff that I've never touched, that I've never reviewed, that I've never talked about or even used on my channel. I have enough product, enough stuff 
for the next year of my channel, if I'm being honest. Um, and so I'm on a no buy. Um, after Christmas, I'm usually so excessive at Christmas that it just inspires me to go on a no buy. And when I say no buy, I mean I don't buy anything new unless it's something that I am replacing. Like, for instance, I just ordered a new Tarte Shape Tape because I'm about to be out of it. I use it every single day. It's, you know, <laughs> one of those things. And sometimes I will buy, if I know I'm about to be out of something, I will buy a backup and I have a backup drawer. Um, so before I buy something, I go in there and see if I have a if I have a backup. I buy everything on sale. I make sure that it, everything is on sale. Why not? When usually, if you wait long enough and you're patient enough, you can you can get it on sale. And for me, um, I always splurge on my birthday. And so until my birthday gets here, every time I really want something, I just put it on a wish list. And then at my birthday, my friend Becky and I go to Oklahoma City and we go to the map counter and we go to Sephora um, which is about an hour away from here we don't have a Sephora nearby so that's good <laughs> for me and um, we I'm taking some of these other brushes out of here that I'm going to use and I splurge to the tune usually of about five hundred dollars um, but I really feel the need to get some money in the bank and six months of no buying should I should have a pretty good nest egg you know I'm not broke but if you guys know anything teachers don't make very much money so I can't be excessive very often um, and I have you know like you guys know I always look for sales I always use coupons I always use points I find ways to get things but um, very rarely do I ever pay full price for something so the no buy you know, help me, <laughs> help me stay accountable um, because it's hard when you see all these new things coming out. I am starting to, or, or the limited quantities or limited edition things are starting to um, not have so much of an effect on me. Or Only today it's going to be on sale. But I'm going to go ahead and put the shade Stylin' because I'm styling and profiling <laughs> right here. I'm going to use whatever this is, a smaller blender brush, and I'm going to put it, tap it on my outer corner. Ooh, that's very pretty. But anyway, so I am really going to work at not adding anything to my collection and being really happy and content with what I have. Um, because I have enough. I have enough. And sometimes I have to remind myself, you have enough. But when you're, you know, passionate about something, it's hard sometimes to, you know, have those rational talks with yourself about, you know, is what I'm doing rational behavior? You know, randomly spending two, three hundred dollars on some makeup for me is not rational. I don't make money like that. And that's why when I was talking about the sponsorship and the clubs and all that kind of stuff and the PR, you know, for me, that would be so um, impacting on my channel because I would not be spending my own money on things that I'm reviewing. You know, I, I would be investing that money back into my channel. I would have more money that would be available for that if I didn't have to buy everything myself. Am I willing to do that? Obviously, yes. I'm doing it now and I have been doing it for a long time, even before my channel. But, um, you know, until then, I show restraint. I, you know, I act like an adult. <laughs> And I promise you, I'm not placing judgment on anybody in this respect. This is what I, this is what needs to be done for me. This is what I need to do. I need to get a grip on myself and get my spending under control and have a good long while where I do assessments of my of my collection and see what I love and see what I don't and see what I feel is missing, which is probably nothing, but, um, you know, if there's something that comes out that I am really excited about, 
and it goes on my wish list and you know I start researching I watch other reviews on it I see if it's worth it if it's worth the hype and if it is by the time my birthday gets here hopefully it's still available sometimes it will be and sometimes it won't be but I have to show some restraint and when my bank account builds I'll be happy that I did that okay I feel like I have a good foundation of what I want for this eye it's pretty simple but the shimmers that I'm going to use I think you're going to put it a little bit over the top you guys know I always go there <laughs> but in the meantime I'm going to before I get to the shimmer part I'm going to take this dough this dome brush it's a BH cosmetics no name brush and I'm gonna go into um, let's see stylin which is the berry color and go under my lower lash line with it really close to the lash line and kind of intensely about two-thirds of the way across <laughs> making sure my camera's not shutting off when I get into these long chatty videos wow guys I can talk and talk and my camera shuts off after about 30 minutes so I try to catch it before then and start another file sometimes I forget like during my shop by stash but it, it goes to another file automatically but it just it cuts out about 15 seconds you know, God forbid you guys miss 15 seconds of what I say, right? But it just occurred to me this morning that I haven't, sometimes I'll say a chit chat, get ready with me. I'm going to combine the other two colors, this one and this one, and just go underneath that. Um, that I say chit chat, get ready with me, and then I end up doing a tutorial anyway and not really talking to you about the things that are going on in the world and especially in the YouTube beauty world those things need to be talked about sometimes because I want you to know in advance my opinion and 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 it's you know it's what it is take it with a grain of salt it's my opinion you know do I expect everyone to agree with me on these things absolutely not I want you to have your own ideas about everything you know what's right for my channel might not be right for your channel and I've always been in that mindset and I, I'll never understand why people get so offended over something else that somebody else is doing on their channel or whatever that has no effect on them it's like why do you think that's even your business like, why is that your business that she's doing a collab with a brand? Or why is that your business that she's, you know, accepting a sponsored video? Like, why is that your business? Is it your channel? No, if you don't agree with those things, don't do them on your channel. You know, a lot of what I think and say is common sense that I understand a lot of people do not have. And again, I'm going to go in with that gold shade and see if that can be, and it's called Hype see if it's worth the hype see if it can be an inner corner highlight I like a bright inner corner so I don't know if this is going to show up enough for me I don't think it is I think I might go back in with that highlighter that I put on my cheeks but anyway it's like why get your panties in a bunch over something that doesn't have anything to do with you and I do you know I do understand people get outraged when somebody does something that's shady or that lacks integrity I do understand that I would be unhappy too especially if I bought into it and I bought something based on on somebody's assessment of it and it wasn't fully honest but how do you even know that like the only way that you can even make those judgments are just gut feelings, gut instincts, you know. People, there are a lot of people who are really good at lying. 
let me tell you something. My, I, I'm going to go back into that crimp and highlight my brow bone. Um, I don't have a good enough memory to be a liar. That's all I have to say about that. And, and I have found in my life that there is so much that can be avoided, so much misunderstanding, so much, um, so much, so many problems and so much disharmony with other human beings can be avoided by just telling the truth. Um, the only time I don't tell the truth is whenever I feel like what I'm going to say is going to destroy somebody's heart. But at the same time, I feel like that's me doing a disservice to that person as well. Because most of the time, I would prefer somebody tell me the truth rather than sugarcoat over something that, you know, has an effect or, you know, is going to impact my life. I would rather just get the ugly truth, you know, go with it, deal with it and go on with my life than have somebody string me along telling me um, something that's not fully honest. You know, and if one thing I've learned in my 46 years of life, and that is not everybody has the same heart as me, not everybody has the same opinion as me. Um, there are myriad possibilities of attitudes and opinions on everything that you could possibly think of. And I can't expect other people to think the same way I do on everything. Um, but I do have an open mind. I will listen, even if I don't agree, I'll listen to somebody other's point of view and I'm okay with allowing them to have that. <laughs> I had a friend in high school that was so rigid in her opinion that she made it feel like anything that wasn't the same as her opinion was wrong. And, and that was always so hurtful to me because I thought, gosh, you know, She's really dogging me out. She's really making me feel bad about feeling the way that I feel. And I was so thankful that later in life, she came to the conclusion that I can have my opinion, that person can have their opinion, and it's okay if those differ. That doesn't mean we don't love each other. That just means that we happen to disagree on this particular subject. Some of those subjects you avoid with people that you don't agree with. You know, sometimes feelings get hurt. You avoid those subjects with those people. Some people you can reason with. And have discussions about things and agree to disagree and move on. So, it just depends on who you are. Um, but I'm of the mind frame, you know, you do you. You believe what you want to believe. You think what you want to think. You make the decisions that you want to make. Because in the long run, at the end of the day, you're the one that has to live with the consequences of those decisions. Um, for me... Because my faith is strong, I feel like when I pray about something and I have peace in my spirit about it, I feel like I can move forward with it uh, with confidence. When I pray about something and I have conflict and chaos in my spirit, I feel like I'm being told, this is the wrong choice for you. Go a different direction. And, you know, some people don't, don't deal with life, you know, in regard, in regard to faith. But that's what I do, and that's what helps me, and that's how I make decisions that I can feel confident about. I can't decide if I want to put glitter glue on my eyelid or not. I feel like being less than extra today. I think what I'm going to do is find my... I'm going to use my MAC Fix Plus, and I'm going to... I'm going to use these two shimmers. I think I'm going to go in the middle with this one. And then into the inner corner with that one and just kind of blend them together. So I'm going to start with Dominate and then move into Boss. These are cool names. It's making me feel all in, empowered and stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, you guys, you know, probably expected to come in here and get another tutorial. But guess what? You got a whole bunch of Sherry's opinion, and I'm packing that Dominate color on my brush right now. I'm using this flat concealer brush, which is kind of like a MAC 242. I was kind of glad to see this because I am get. I think I heard somebody say that MAC is going to all synthetic, and I think the MAC 242 is a, 
is a natural hairbrush. And so everywhere that I've looked for it, it says out of stock. So I don't think they're making it anymore. I wish I would have gotten another one before they stopped. Um, anyway, going to spray this with the MAC Fix Plus. I'm going to go in lightly with that to begin with. And I'm just going to go right into the center and pull it into the outer V color. But yeah, you got a whole lot of sherry, whole lot of sherry in today's video. You know, I love makeup and I love to talk about makeup, but you know, there are real life things that matter to me. And if I really want you guys to know who I am, you know, there are times I'm have to share those things with you. That's not showing up at all. So I'm going in with my finger. I mean, it's showing up, but not as intensely as I want it to. Whoo! That did it. That did it, girls. And guys. <laughs> Whoo! Yes. Love it. Okay. I think I'm just going to maybe go over it a little bit with the brush now and just make sure it's nice and I'm kind of feathering it, not as opaquely, into the next color that'll be coming in here. All right, going in with the finger and dominate onto the other eye. I make myself look like my hands are all, like all bent up with arthritis or something when I do this. But I ain't worried about my fingers. I'm worried about what this eyeshadow is looking like on my eye. I love that. <gasps> Look at that color, you guys. See what I'm talking about? I've got beautiful things that have been sitting in a drawer for who knows how long. Why would you do that? Go buy something that may or may not be good when you got something that's already really good in your drawers and easily accessible. call myself a dummy a lot because I can be for sure whoo all right happy girl I'm gonna use my color switch here and clean that off so that I can use this brush for the other one which is called boss and I am gonna go in with my my brush and try to get the pigmentation I want with my brush because you know it's deep in the deep downs of my eye Let's see what we can do with it. Oh, oh my. This one is going on like butter. Oh, it's super pretty. You guys, it's gold, but it's almost like a lighter rose gold. Oh, super pretty. I get so jazzed about shimmery colors. You know, this rule about, you know, if you're a more mature person, over 25 or whatever people can consider old these days, I'm not ever gonna stop putting shimmer on my eye. Just telling you now, I'm gonna be 85 with glitter, glittery eyelids. You better believe it. <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead, pretty. Go ahead, pretty. This part, I can't talk through. So lucky you, you get to fast forward through part of this video. If you haven't given up on me and clicked out by now, thank you for staying. And thank you for caring about what I have to say and what matters to me. And for giving me the opportunity to share my heart.
my mascara now. I'm using the uh, MAC Extended Play Giga Black mascara for the bottom. And if I haven't given you enough information in this video, if you have any questions about or want my opinion on something, ask me. You know, I have strong opinions on most things. And I'll be glad to share my perspective with you. Got some bottom lashes now. Let's make some top ones. <clears throat> Again, this is the Revlon Volume Plus Length Magnified. lash stuff. This is the Eyelure number 117 Wispies. That's what I'm going to use. And to me, it looks like it's, I'm not going to have to trim them. I'm going to go ahead and get glue on the lashes. So by the time I get the second one, the glue applied, the other one is about ready to go on. So here we go. about lipstick I don't even know I kind of feel like using a MAC lipstick and since my eyes pretty tame maybe I can do something with a little bit more color this ooh, that one's pretty I don't want to use anything that's not moisturizing today because my lips are tore up this is called renegade it's by Tarte so I have lots of new um, urban decay lip liners so I'm trying to use those. What do you think? Looks pretty good, like a pretty good match. And this one is um, Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On, and it's called Big Bang. <laughs> do you guys like that show? I love that show. Sheldon makes me laugh like no other. Um, <clears throat> all right. Shaky. I actually didn't explain much to you guys about intermittent fasting. It's basically, the, the schedule that I try to follow is I fast for 16 hours. So if I stop eating at 9 o'clock the night before, I go from 9 to 9 for 12 hours. And then 10, 11, 12, 1, I try to get 16 hours. Um, I'm beyond that now because I've been taking so long to film. So I haven't eaten since 9 o'clock last night, so I'm a little bit shaky. Um, the reason for intermittent fasting is keeping your insulin level um, leveled out and not having any spikes or lows, just to keeping it on a um, an even keel. If you keep your insulin on an even keel, that's when fat burning takes place. Um, that's when something called autophagy takes place, and that's something that I'm really researching right now. And what happens with autophagy is your body basically self-digests, which sounds terrible. But it is getting rid of dysfunctional cells, cells that are damaged, cells that are old and dying, um, and replacing them with cells that are, um, that are healthy. Uh, building muscle because it gives the opportunity for muscles to heal, for the bad cells to go and the new cells to regrow, and growth hormone is released during that time. So there's lots of health benefits to it, um, but the potential for a lot of weight loss. So that's why I do it. Big bang, going in here. Um, we'll do the lip liner. I'll go back and, and use the mascara on that one so I don't forget about it. But let's go in with Big Bang if I can get the lid off. <laughs> okay, now I need to put this back up or back down. You guys, me and the camera angle, seriously. Can't figure it out. <laughs> Ooh, 
this is pretty and I think it's going to match very well. But you know what? I think I have too much um, lip balm. I'm going to remove a little bit so it doesn't dilute the color. having that on my whole lip <laughs> so but I'm gonna go in with Tarte Renegade I like these lipstick on one side lip gloss on the other side Ew. <laughs> pretty and my lips are saying thank you no lip liquid lipstick no matte Thank you for giving us a drink. I'm not even going to put the, I think we're nice and shiny and glossy already. I'm not going to put this on, I'm, but if I go anywhere, I'll take it with me. I like to put that on after the lipstick has worn off a little bit just to kind of bring it back to life. So, one more little doodah, one more little detail, and we'll be done. Gonna connect these or mesh these together a little. I think the length of the lash is perfect. I think they're really pretty. I'm happy with the eye look. I love experimentation. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try a different combination of the dewy finish and the cover effects. Instead of putting this on first, I'm gonna put this on first to set it, and then I'm gonna use the other one to put some luminous, luminosity back to my face, because it's looking real dry and crusty. And yeah, I'm not loving, I'm not loving the way, I think it's the milk thing. I don't think it's the foundation. I think if I would've used my regular combination, I think the foundation would look really nice. So, here we go. Dry that off, and in the meantime, shake this. <laughs> yeah, what's Sherry doing, guys? <laughs> All right, dry. Now let's get some glow going on. I don't really feel like the the uh, highlighter that I put on did much, so this will help. Alright, that one did not drop droplets all over my face this time, which is nice. Alrighty, that's it folks, six hours later. <laughs> oh, look at the lipstick. <laughs> yeah, had lipstick like fully all over my teeth. <clears throat> okay, here's a close-up of the eye. I think it turned out really nice. And this little palette, this Tardist Pro to Go, I think it's a hit. What do you think? I think it turned out really nice. Nice little experiment that turned out good. <laughs> Look at my teeth. What is it? I'm going to do that trick that looks terrible. Okay, going to go do something with my hair. I um, was going to show you that I got a brand new ginormous bottle of Guest Dare. That's what I'm going to wear today. Mm. Mm. I love it, you guys. Okay, going to go do something to my hair and I'll be back for some final thoughts. And if you're still with me, God bless you. <laughs> no lipstick. Alright, be right back. Alright guys, I am back. 
Thank you so much for being here and for giving me a platform to express myself and talk about what's on my heart. Um, I think we all need that from time to time and I love when people are willing to be transparent and talk about the struggles that they go through. Um, this guy, his name is Mark Hall and he's the lead singer of a band I love called Casting Crowns. Um, he was talking about a song called Loving My Jesus and he was talking about that if we don't show our scars that a lot of people will feel alone. He's like showing your scars and being transparent and saying, hey, I'm struggling with this. This is hard for me or this broke my heart or this, you know, is something that is just haunting me every day of my life. If you can be transparent and share those scars with other people, um, and I intend on doing that on my channel in the near future. I've, I've actually taken some polls and talked about a few things with people that I trust their opinion. Um, but I really feel like there's a lot that I have to say about a lot of things, and I'm going to start sharing some of those things with you. That was the beginning of it today. Um, I hope you like it. Um, I think heart-to-hearts with other human beings is something that um, we've kind of strayed away from in the technology age where you can just send somebody a text. So from time to time, I just want to bring it back down to one person talking to another person and talk about things that matter to me. And hopefully um, through that will be helpful to somebody else, um, comforting or encouraging to somebody else, or just helping somebody realize that they're not alone in this world, that there's somebody else that understands and feels the same things that they're feeling. So, um, yeah. Feel free to start a dialogue in, in the comment section if you like. Um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care and God bless. Much love and big hugs to you guys. Mwah. Bye. to feel